now. John chapter 7. Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, and all who ever come in before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not except to steal, to kill, and destroy. I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But I have him who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my sheep. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Father, speak to us today through your word. Glorify your Son in Jesus' name. Amen. In our series on kingdom living, we have looked at some amazing truths. And today I want to talk to you about the king's pasture. Jesus said in verse 9, I am the door. I mean, if any man will in, he shall be saved and shall go in and find pasture. There is a pasture in the kingdom of God that I shall actually become more accustomed to in today's city. And I believe that the evidence that we are seeing today in our, in our churches across America that most people do not realize that's going on. Now, I want to tell you something, baby, because if you aren't careful, you will listen to the news media and you will read the news media and you will watch the news media, and you will become absolutely convinced that the church, the body of Christ, is really the way to absolutely nothing. But I want you to understand that the body of Christ is still in good shape. There are a lot of people being saved across the face of this world and across the face of this nation. Churches, we know it is changing a lot, but that's all right. Our God is a never changing God, and His Word is eternal, and His love is everlasting. And so there are a lot of things going on in churches today, and in my heart of hearts, I'm absolutely convinced that some of these things may be described as signs, and some of these things may be described as strange things, but I believe in my heart that God is trying to break through this and press into understanding more about the truth of the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully today because I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. And I want you to listen to me with your spirit and not just with your flesh. I have a great, great respect for those people who have the anointing of God in their lives and in their lives who pray for the sick and, and who are moved by the power of God with such degree that they can no longer maintain their equilibrium. And I am certainly not opposed to that, and I am overjoyed at the joy that is coming back to the body of Christ to where people are expressing the joy for Jesus and laughter and having fun at church. Aren't you glad we can have fun at church? Aren't you glad we can have fun at church? Amen. Listen, I, I'm telling you guys, I believe that all of these things that I'm talking about maybe have us pointed in a different direction to see a significance of what God is really trying to say to us. Where is God leading us and is there a place of green pastures 
that has all of the ingredients and much, much more that maybe somehow we have not been able to see the source because of the trees. So what I want to show you today is, is the overall plan of God that He has shown me that has to do with the provisions for those who are involved in kingdom living. That is, living under the rule of God in our everyday living. Kingdom living is simply living under the rule of God in our everyday living. Or, can I put it another way? Living the meaning of Christian life. Living the meaning of Christian life. Jesus said in verse 9, I am the door. He said in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. In other words, now listen, Jesus is the entrance and the provider for the sheep. And in verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known as mine. You see, the shepherd represents his ship. The shepherd is there to protect. The shepherd knows us. The shepherd sees our lip. He, he hears our heavy breath. He knows when we are in distress. So it is the shepherd who invites and directs us in our experience of the kingdom living. Hold on just a minute. My, my brief box has decided that there is a great day for it to go on strike. Last week we looked at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus said, But seek first to the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Now, now listen, shepherd, I want you to get this. If the shepherd is the door and the provider, who do we need to follow to the green pasture? The shepherd. Look, that's not hard. This is not the case that you can fail. It's all right to talk out loud in church. I don't know if you knew that or not. And, and, you know, especially if the preacher asks you something, you can answer back. If you ask, answer wrong, it's going to be kind of embarrassing, but that's all right. Give it a shot. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1 and 2 says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not live. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my sins. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. God intended for the sheep to follow the shepherd. God intended for the sheep to follow the shepherd. Why? Because you can trust the shepherd. You can trust the Lord. Amen? God doesn't lead you wrong. The Word of God says that He guides the footsteps of the righteous. It is His job to lead us. We can trust Him. It is, it, now listen, listen. If it is the responsibility of the shepherd, the guide to provide and to prevent, to protect the sheep, then what is the responsibility of the sheep? Right on my tongue. First of all, the first responsibility of the sheep is to hear the shepherd. To hear the shepherd. I got a theory coming down that you're going to love. I can't tell you that it is still my thunder. John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Because of our high-profile society, too many folk go to church today to be entertained and to be hearing from the shepherd. Far too many people come to church not to hear the Word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, but the Word of God that cuts deep inside and feeds you from sin and frees you from temple and gives you power to live over victory is what God intends for us to come to hear. And I'm telling you folks, listen to me, the hour is coming <coughs> when God will rise up such a bunch of ministers that when you walk into the service of God, the Word of God will be spoken 
and it will cause you to fall on your face and say, Oh my God, I need to repeat my sins. You say, Preacher, I, I don't see that happening. Well, get ready, it's going to happen. You take it from, listen, you take it from somebody that's had a word from God. I, I have a word from God. The latter rain is coming. The latter rain is coming. And sheep must come to hear, not come to tell, not come to run, not come to boss. The sheep must come to hear. The next responsibility of the sheep is not to foul up the pasture for everybody else. Oh, this is so good. I can't wait to get there. Ezekiel compares the people of God to sheep. Notice what he said in Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning in verse 17. He says, As for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord, the whole I shall judge between sheep and sheep. Hello? Uh, between lambs and goats. It is too little for you. Is it too little for you to have eaten up the good pasture that you must tear down with your feet the residue of your pasture, and to have drunk of the clear water that you must foul the residue with your feet? You know what he's saying? He said, "Oh, I'm not going to tell you yet. Oh, this is so awesome." He said, "My flock." Listen to what he said. They, uh, they, they eat what you have trampled with your feet. They drink what you have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, those folks who have eaten and drunk and then fouled up everything else. Behold, I myself will drink between the fat and the lean sheep. Yes, glory to God. Because you, because you have punished with sighs and sinners, Butted all the weak ones with your horns and scattered them abroad. You say, preacher, that has absolutely nothing to do with me. It sure doesn't. Because you are so wonderful and you are so precious and you are so godly. But if they would get here, they would clean their problems. Because some folk come to church with such an attitude. I've gossiped and filled with so much anger and bitterness that they can't get along with anybody else. And all they do is trample down the glass to a point to where the other sheep cannot get any spiritual nourishment. Hello? Notice what he said, verse 17. After you, after those sheep who have have come filled with spiritual pride. Those two have drunk of the clear water that you must foul the residue of your feet. There are those folks in church that get just a little too, and they get so filled with spiritual pride that they just kind of trample around in all the places of church that nobody else can drink when they get finished. Ezekiel said, there is some clear water right here. And you just put a few step in that clear water, and you slurp and slurp, and when you get finished, you just jump in it and say, da 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 Y'all want to drink? Hello? And he said, these are the kind of folks that go over here where there's nice, tender, spiritual grass. And they just eat and eat and eat. And when they get to eating, they just go, that was some grace. There are folk in church that are so filled with spiritual pride that nobody else can deal with them. They call them to, well, they don't call themselves that. They don't want you to know they know it. God deliver me from super saints. Super saints are so godly. They aren't like everybody else. I thank God that I'm not like those saints. 
you ever get blessed, God, then we can have a conversation. Hello? Bless your heart. Come on, come on. Let me I, I want to tell you something. I, I, I've got a reading for you here. But you may not like it. God did not call sheep to tell other sheep what the shepherd said. Can I make that statement again? God did not call sheep to tell the other sheep what the shepherd said. I don't know how to tell you this in a nice way. I have a pretty good relationship with the shepherd. If he wants to tell me something, he can talk. And I can hear him. I made a wonderful revelation. You're going to hear it in the series about all too much from now. You write this down in your little notebook pad. If you brought it with you today. Are you Are you ready? Look, look at me. Are you ready? Not everybody that says God has said has heard from God. Are you listening? Not everybody that says God said has heard from God. If God has a word for me, He's welcome to talk to me. You know what right? God's responsibility is to talk. My responsibility is to hear. God says in verse 20 that he'll judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. God says, you fatted folk, come and eat and run off and, and think that you have it all together. All you do is mess up the stuff for everybody else. Verse 21, he says, you're driving people away when you have to. He said, I don't want to talk to you. You didn't read the right verse. That's what the Hebrews did. Or it's what the Greeks did. Or it's the New Living Translation. There are those people in the church that develop an attitude of ownership. Have you ever been in the church where people have an attitude of ownership? This is my seat. This is my song. This is my church. This is Nobody gave you my church people in. Spiritually. Did they? No. No. I mean, let me help you a little bit. This is not your church. The church doesn't belong to your family, and the church doesn't belong to some other group of folks. This is God's church. And God's church, there is, there is a philosophy in God's church that's biblical, and that is there are no big eyes and enemies in the church of the living God. Isn't that right? It doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter who you are and what you drive. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how poor. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of bankruptcy for the 13th time or if you've got enough to buy off Donald's. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? There are no big eyes and little use in the church unless men put them there and they have no right to do that because this is God's church. John chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus said unto the Lord, I mean, you and I enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find the pastor. Therefore, what can we expect to find in the king's pastor? Well, Psalm 24, we're going back to it again because it's so good. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So we didn't talk about this green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to paths of righteousness. Many say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I am dwell in the house of the Lord of Heaven. First of all, in the king's pasture, in that green pasture, there is no lack. The Lord is my shepherd, but I shall not walk. I mean, what more can you add to that? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to Jesus and glory through Christ Jesus. David said in Psalm chapter 37, verse 25, I have been young and now I am old, and yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. When you live under the sovereignty of God, under the rule of God in your life, there is no right. You say, well, preacher, you don't understand. Yes, I do understand. So, listen, let me be honest with you guys. Most of us are in the financial mess we need because of stupidity. We buy things that we can't afford. We, we try to keep up with the Joneses. And about the time we catch up with the Joneses, they read finances and they have to start all over again. The next thing is there's peace in the king's pasture. He said, He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me to find still water. Still water means a calmness and peace. Still water means that there's no, there no contrary wind taking place in our life. Brother, listen to me carefully today. When the Good Shepherd is in control of your life, there is a peace that passes understanding, and you can rest in the Master. Next, there is restoration in the King's pasture. The Bible said, He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God is in the restoration business. Joel chapter 2, verse 21 through 25, he says this, the Lord will do great things, and then he skips into the 25. He will restore to you the world, the years the locust has eaten. In the king's pasture, there's restoration. I want to tell you something, child of God. I want you to listen to me today. Listen, God will restore that which Satan has stolen from you. God will restore that which Satan has stolen from you. You say, well, preacher, you don't understand. He stole my head. God will restore it. You say, preacher, he stole my relationship. God will restore it. You say, preacher, Satan <coughs> took away my wife or he took away my husband. Oh, honey, God has got somebody 10,000 times better than the one that walked away with Susan Slot. If you'll just stay true to God, there is restoration in the King's kingdom. Stop being desperate. Oh, you know my circumstances, Jesus. Send me somebody that's good looking and wealthy. Owns a home or a car. Got a great job. And do it soon. Time passes. Lord Jesus, please send me to Jesus. Just send me somebody that looks good. Got a good job. And can a few of apartment. I'm passing. Lord oh, Jesus! Just send me somebody that can walk and teach to and come and have a house for me.
time passes. God just sent me something out of the still breathing. Honey, just stay true to the master. He'll provide for you every need. He's in the ministry of restoration. You know? He'll give you back your health. He'll give you back your joy. He'll give you back your peace. He'll give you back all the way. He'll, listen, if, 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 you don't listen to what I'm saying. If He doesn't give you back the kind of lover that you asked Him for, He'll be your lover. Are you listening to me? Let's make no fear in the King's passion. I will fear no evil, David said. Psalm 27, says, the Lord is my light and my salvation in whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid. I want you to listen to what you say today. I want you to understand today. One of the greatest enemies that you will ever have in your life outside of Satan himself is the spirit of fear. And I promise you, the spirit of fear will attack your life in times and places and in areas that you absolutely least expect it. Fear produces physical weakness and emotional confusion. Fear upsets our nervous system. And far too many of God's children today are in bondage to the spirit of fear. Take notice. Oh, oh, listen, folks. This is not a time for the church to cower down. This is a time for the church to stand up. This is a time for the church to do what God has called us to be, to do what God has called us to do. In this time of chaos and confusion, in this time of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness, in this time where people are killing each other in our streets in the name of justice and peace and freedom, this is the time for the church of the living God to stand up and hold high the banner of the cross. Next, the constant presence of God is in the king's pasture. David said to me, you are with me. I cannot tell you how important it is for us to realize the abiding presence of God in our lives. As most of you know, I've walked in some dark places and in some deep valleys. When I was in the field, when I was out of the field, years ago and years not too long ago, but what I know, His presence is there. And what I can feel the arms of me, I know the good shepherd is there. And that makes all, listen, that makes all the difference in the world. Why? Because God and me make the majority. Yes! Let me tell you something. You're in God in the I don't care who you're standing in front of. I don't care who you're standing beside of. I don't care what the major said. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the politicians say. I don't care what the economic specialists say. I don't care what all those folk looking at the stock market and say. I know the God that we make the majority. And if God is for me, God, who can be against you? Woo! If God is for you, who can be against you? You can walk as not in victory, bless God, because God is for you. Amen. Next, there is provision in the king's pasture. The Bible said he prepares the table before him in the presence of my enemies. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy, folks. I want you to, I want you to get this. God just doesn't give you peanut butter and jelly sandwich when there ain't nobody listening. The Bible says that God prepares a picnic for me in the presence of my enemies. When the world thinks he's got me, when the world thinks we're defeated, when the world thinks we're going on, when the world thinks there's nothing else for them to do but push us in the hole, God says, watch this. And he brings out the steak and the potatoes and the beans. He brings out mashed potatoes and, and cooking bread and bread. And he spreads it all out with sweet tea. And he said, well, look at my church. Look at my sheep. I provided for them a feast. You trampled on the water and trampled in the grass world, but my sheep now have I think you lost your mind. I may have, but don't mess with me. I'm having fun. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you listen to me well today. We are not far. We are not far from the time that God will show us and show the world that we're His kids and He's our God. That brings me to this last thing I want to tell you. In the king's pasture, there is an anointing. You anoint my head with oil. Let me tell you one of the problems with God's anointing in our lives. And I'm going to tell you something today. Confession is good for the heart. I'm going to do my heart good today. When I first realized I was, I was the only teacher that I am now. But when I first understood, when I first began to realize the truth of, of the concerning the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in my own life, when I understood the truth about the moving in my own life, listen to me. I suddenly developed an attitude. But everybody in the world they were carnal Christians. Are you listening to what I'm telling you today? When all of a sudden I when all of a sudden I, I understood about spiritual gifts and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and I understood what God was doing in my life, and I saw it and I, and I got a, a vision of it, then all of a sudden something happened in my life. And I decided that if you wasn't like me, you were cold. You say, Preacher, I can't believe you did that. You know what happened in my life? I developed a false sense of spirituality. Now, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You see, a, a false spirituality is always built entirely on feelings, on moods on impressions, and on imaginations. These are all senses, all thoughts, and they're experience-oriented. And a false sense of spirituality always says, now that I'm spiritual, where can I find somebody else in spiritual environment where I can fellowship? Hello? Hello? Amen. Listen, I don't want to follow people with them folks who love me. I don't need somebody that's as godly as I am. I need somebody that can get in touch with me. I need somebody that has got the horns and the horns like I have. Hello? Are you listening? And if you aren't careful, you're going to develop this attitude. Now, my church is not spiritual.
church and not to me anymore. My ministry can't help me because I'm more spiritual than he is, and God bless all of those poor old spiritual people. Therefore, false spirituality has a tendency to be impatient. That is, trying to get ahead of God. And as a result, false spirituality always develops a spiritual pride that is destructive. And I'm going to tell you today on the authority of the Word of God, biblical anointing always leads us to Jesus and away from ourselves. Did you hear that? The biblical anointing always leads us to Jesus and away from our sin. And I must confess to you today that when I really understood God's anointing in my life, my attitude went from what is me to woe is me. Because I realized when I fell from God, I had really gone in my false sin. And then there is service in the same place. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Child of God, listen to me. When we are willing to live under the rule of God for our lives, God will make you available to be used by God. All of these things are in the King's pasture. All of these benefits are in the kingdom of God. <laughs> if you're not saved, my invitation to you today is simply to allow Jesus Christ to come into your life to give you these things in your future. But if you are saved, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Look at the benefit. Look at the benefit of living in the King's pasture. Let's pray together. Here's about I can if you're making your friend and you say it with me. Hands up. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the provision that you provided for my life. Give me the courage to live my life and such a way that others may see my peace and may feel my excitement and may realize my commitment to kingdom living. I can because I'm more than a person for Christ who loves me. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever God's put in your heart, I want you to very quickly step out from where you are. Make your way to the front. You come right now.